What's up guys, Winter Kills, we're back with another deck profile. Um, so today we got another update video on High Priestess of Prophecy, and there will be a series of update videos coming up in the next couple of days because I haven't been able to post much in the past few weeks due to my computer being a complete asshole. Um, but I've just recently found a way, now that I've gotten a new phone and everything, it's got a lot better camera on it, so um, it's a lot easier to record with, and that's what I've been using for the past couple of videos, as you may have noticed. Um, I don't know if you can tell if the picture's any better, but uh, I certainly think it is. But, as you can see here, just by the top card, we got Spellbooks. Um, this is like sort of my pet deck. Um, I don't usually play it a lot, but I think it's fun to play. I um, always thought it was a very cool deck, the way it's based around primarily spells, which is obviously in the title of the name. Um, and the artwork on all the cards is pretty cool, uh, if I do say so myself. And I'm not just talking about High Priestess, obviously, I'm talking about all the other cards. I think the artwork's pretty cool, and it's one of the decks, one of the few decks that I've managed to completely bling out, as you'll see as we get going through here. So we're going to start off with the monsters, as always. So uh, for any spellbook deck, um, well not any, uh, I'm running the Triple Priestess build over the Double Priestess world build, as I think it's personally more consistent. Um, this is the one, obviously, you reveal three spellbooks to special summon from your hand. Um, and then you banish the spellbook from hand or graveyard to uh, pop card on your opponent's side of the field. It is a level 7, so you could play Draco Sack in here, or Big Eye, or Master Blades, whatever. Um, I don't, personally, because I think you lose board presence with that, because I'd rather have the Priests on board, because then you still have targets for your powers and your uh, wisdoms and stuff like that. And obviously you can still use Fate, for because for you to use Fate, you need to have uh, a Spellcaster on, on board. So, uh, moving on with the monster lineup. Three blue boy, main searcher. Um, I got the one ulti and it's kind of pissing me off, but uh, whatever. Maybe I'll get two more ultis sometime in the future. Yeah, main searcher, no explanation there. Three blue boy. Still playing the three temperance build. It's a lot quicker. I think it's better for the format and the way the format is right now. Especially with Clifford, Shadal, Burning Abyss. They're all very fast paced decks. So, um, and you don't really want to leave yourself open against Clifford's. Uh, because they can OTK pretty fast. Uh, they can drop a pretty hefty board on you and put some damage on board real quick and uh, make it so you can't play Yu-Gi-Oh! Because um, they can make a huge board and flip Vanity, Skill Drain, and then you basically lose at that point. So having Temperance to get out your boss monsters really quick uh, is very helpful. So that's why I'm playing the Triple Temperance over the... Uh, one. Some people play one Temperance, or they'll play two Justice, or three Justice, no Temperance. I think... Three temperance is the way to go. And uh, with graveyard activity being a big thing right now, uh, play two Kaiku because when he does damage to your opponent, you can banish two cards from the graveyard. Perfect for Shadal, perfect for uh, Burning Abyss. Uh, not so much for Cliff Warts, obviously, to be an easy side out against them as they do not have a graveyard because uh, everything goes back to the top of the extra deck, which uh, can get annoying sometimes because there's no card that says banish all cards in your opponent's extra deck. Uh, if there was, I'm sure everybody would play at least a copy or two of that. So that's it for the monsters. Uh, moving on to the bread and butter for the deck is basically the spell lineup. So we're starting off with triple spell book of secrets. Again, I got the one ulti uh, bugging me, but what are you going to do? Three secrets, main card of the deck. You have to play three. Uh, three crescents. Now this is a little bit uh, controversial, I would say. A lot of people play one. Some people don't play any at all. Um, I think three is really good because one, it's great for first turn consistency. Because if you can open this and then grab secrets off of it, or maybe you already have secrets in hand, you can get this, grab any book you want, and then get Blue Boy and uh, with your secrets, grab another spell book, master copy, if you already have another one in hand, and then you can make Fate Live turn one, which is uh, something you want to be doing with this deck, is getting Fate Live, getting Tower to your hand first turn, which uh, this makes it a lot easier when you're playing uh, Triple Crescents. Uh, next, three master... Um, not too much something you want to see first turn. Uh, I usually like to search it out. I mean, if I have secrets and master in hand, it's good. But um, you want to have that extra book in hand to reveal so you can actually use it in the spellcaster on board. So, but I think three is a good number. I, I don't have a problem with three. Some people play one or two. I think three is, three is good. Uh, two tower recycles everything. Um, you definitely, if, the, if your opponent keeps going after this, you want to keep recycling it because, um, one, it'll, uh, keep your, uh, draw engine going a lot better. You'll be able to draw two cards per turn instead of just one, and, uh, you'll be able to keep recycling all of your cards, which is always nice. 
Uh, next, two eternity, get back banished spell books to hand uh, a lot quicker. This is really good for fate. You can banish fate out of grave instead of cycling it back in with tower and then just eternity it back to your hand to reuse, which is a quicker loop than just looping it back into your deck. Uh, two power, I think two power is a lot better because it's more aggressive that way. Um, and it's also a little faster because you can search uh, your cards out a little faster as well. Um, next, we play one fate, best card in the deck as far as spells go. So we can only play one, obviously. So you play one. One star hall, again, makes the deck a little more aggressive. Kind of takes the pressure off your tower. They'll want to pop this or instead of your tower and uh, kind of protects your back row that you play. So you can get those three reckless skewed set and then flip them all at once. Um, and yeah, if this does get popped, hopefully you've got a couple counters on it. You can go ahead and search a spellcaster equal to the number of counters whose level, whose level is equal to the number of counters that were on it. And also gives them a little attack boost, which is nice. I've been playing one life now because um, late game, if you're out of priestesses, you really can't do much. Um, you kind of lose at that point, so life is really good for late game. Um, and if you do draw it early game, it's one of those books that you can keep revealing, or you can banish with priestess, so it's never really dead. It's always useful for something. Uh, still playing one wisdom. I haven't really found the need to bump up to two. Um, I feel like it's starting to shift towards a trap light format. Um, that's kind of how I built this deck around because with Scolding being a card and uh, the new Danko Saka card, which is basically the Cold Wave, um, new Cold Wave card, you don't really need to play that much. I feel like it'll shift back to a uh, Trap Light format. And obviously, like as I said in the beginning of the video, I don't play this deck um, competitively right now. Um, sometimes I do for fun, um, just to kind of, you know, say uh, I, I play Spellbooks and, you know, it used to be the best deck out there and now it's kind of fallen by the wayside which is pretty crazy to see how uh konami does that to us and uh yeah you spend all this money and then months down the road it's not worth anything but hey uh one dark hole duh one dark hole really because i mean there's a little bit of synergy with this you can obviously it'll blow up both your and your opponent's field but uh you can always chain wisdom and keep your monsters uh, and also I only have one Regeki, and it's in, uh, it's Tower Knights, and obviously, as you guys know, that is my main deck, so, uh, don't really feel like moving it from that deck to this deck. So, yeah, one Dark Hole, you can play Regeki if you want, it doesn't really matter. Uh, that's it for the spells, moving on to the traps. Traps are pretty basic, nothing really special. Three Reckless Greed for draw power, uh, obviously, after you use Reckless Greed, you can't draw the next turn, but... We do play Spellbook Tower, which allows you to get that extra draw each turn. So it's like you don't get um, that little penalty for Reckless Greed, which is really nice. And this is probably one of the best draw powers for this deck alone. I don't think upstarts that well, because um, this deck really can't OTK that hard. It can't really put damage on board so fast. Um, but that's why... Uh... And I just forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> I'm sure I'll come back to it in a couple minutes. Uh, anyways, three threatening roar to protect yourself because you always open up with maybe a blue boy or something, something small on your side of the field. Maybe if your temperance gets broke through, uh, you don't want to be stuck with a little thousand attack, five hundred attack guy in your side of the field, especially with decks like Shadal and Quivorts. They can make huge boards first turn, and um, they can definitely OTK, especially with cards like BLS and Dark Arm and stuff. The new roar has actually been a really nice tech in here, and um, I'm glad that I'm playing three. Wouldn't play two. One play one, three's perfect. And lastly, uh, three traps done. Um, this is more guided towards my local meta. Um, a lot of trap heavy stuff. Um, skill drain starting to come back, especially with Cliff Warts. Um, and like I said, it's, it's, it's going trap light, but it's not in a sense. And cards like this, um, I mean, you don't really need to play as many traps now with a lot of the decks that are coming out, like Vanities, Emptiness, they're playing Vanities, they're playing three copies of Vanities, they're playing three Skill Drain, um, and be able to shut those off, um, you know, for the entire turn. So you can at least play Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, for a little bit is nice with Trap Stun. Um, and I know some other some decks are even playing this, so they can Trap Stun with their Vanities up still, and um, still uh, be able to um, Special Summon and stuff like that.
So yeah, that's it. Three uh, three traps done. There's only nine traps in this deck. That's all I really need to play. You need to make room for all the spells. Um, as far as extra deck goes, I don't really have one. Never really needed to make one. Um, because you can make a pretty controlling board with just the Priestess. And protecting with the Threatening Roar. And uh, stuff like that. And all your attacks will hopefully go through. Because you're playing Wisdom and 3 Traps done. So, um, obviously, uh, stuff you could play in the extra deck. is any rank 4, you could play rank 7s, obviously, with Priestess. Draco, Big Eye, stuff like that. Master of Blades. Um, I just choose not to. I think it's I think it's better off on its own, really. But, uh, yeah, that's it. Um, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Leave a comment in the comment section below if you have, uh, any ideas, um, on how to make this deck better. Um, you could tell me, uh, maybe if you played spellbooks before and you tell me how you, uh, had your build. Um, yeah. And, uh, don't forget to subscribe, guys, if you already haven't, if you want to see more videos like this. Helps out. We appreciate it a lot. Um, as always, guys, we'll see you next time.